Hello, everyone. Welcome back to part two of topic six. I thought that was a good place for us to take a break, right? I don't want these videos to be too long and, uh, you know, put you to sleep. Uh, so let's continue. Okay, we were talking about building height. But before that, let's get this going. Lovely. So the next item that I want to discuss when it comes to building height is mezzanines. Um, so I would ask you to go and check out right away the definition for mezzanines. Hopefully I have it here, but if I don't, I can tell you what it is. Mezzanines, mezzanines, there we go. Mezzanines, according to the building code, refers to an intermediate floor assembly between the floor and the ceiling of any room or story and includes also an intermediate interior balcony. So basically, one way to look at this is that mezzanine is like a partial story that you find inside a building, okay? Uh, but the question is, does that partial story count as a full story according to the building code? What I've included here for you is an image of an interior view of our very own ACE building, which shows a mezzanine, right? You can see how that portion of the second floor does not cover the entirety of the first floor. So it's a partial story. Don't know. Is it a partial floor? Yes. Okay. But the, is it considered then a story according to the building code? turns out that according to the building code, and this is found under sentences, division B, 3.2.1.1 up from three to eight, sometimes it's considered a story and sometimes it's not, depending on whether or not certain properties are identified. So here's the thing. Let's start with sentence 3.2.1.1.3, okay? And I've put these diagrams in your course notes. Uh, in this case, what's shown here is if you had a mezzanine kind of like this, according to sentence three identified here, it's not considered a story if the area of that mezzanine is less than or equal to 40% of the area of the story below it. And not or, and the partitions or the walls on that partial story are less than or equal to 1,070 millimeters. If those two items happen together, then it's not a story. That mezzanine is not a story, okay? If even one of them fails, then it's considered a story, okay? So again, if the area of the mezzanine is less than 40% of the area of the story, and I'm showing here the schematic and floor plan, and not or, the partitions or the walls in that mezzanine are no more than 1,070 millimeters, if those two happen together, it's not a story. So if either one of them is not applicable, then it is a story. Now let's look at sentence four, that is under division B 3.2.1.14. A mezzanine is not considered a story if the previously seen sentence three does not apply and the area of the mezzanine is less than 10% of the story and the partition walls are more than 1,070 millimeters. So these all have to happen together. So specifically, the previous sentence does not apply. Okay, so somehow that sentence does not apply. Then you have to check to see, is the area of the mezzanine less than or equal to 10% of the area of the whole story below it? And then you also have to check, are the partition walls more than 1,070 millimeters? If any of these apply, sorry, if all of them apply, all of them apply, then this mezzanine is not a story. If even one of them does not apply, 
then it is a story. Okay. Now, another thing that I want to point out too is that when you're reading these through these two sentences, sentence three and four that we've just identified, the words aggregate area of the mezzanine that are not superimposed, those words are used. So I want to kind of explain to you, maybe with this illustration, what that is meant. Sometimes you can have it, like in this case, that maybe there is more than one mezzanine at the same level above a story. Just like in case of our second story, the second floor of the ACE building. So when you're looking at the area of the mezzanine, you have to add all of the mezzanines at that same level. Okay, that's what is meant by aggregate area. Okay, now under sentence five, the building code addresses the possibility of multiple mezzanines on top of each other, right? Multiple partial stories. And what it says is that you have to first check the lowest of the mezzanines. And that lowest mezzanine may or may not be a story. It, it's possible, but it may or may not be, okay? However, the one above it must be counted as a story, okay? Check it out and you'll see what I mean. Now, mezzanines can be a bit confusing, not because they're difficult, but because they're new and you have to get used to the terminology. So I recommend to you that you're now ready to try question two in homework set number two. So give that a try. Homework is your friend in this course. All right, the next characteristic we'll be looking at is how many streets is a building facing? And I have to say, this kind of seems obvious, right? Why am I spending time about this? But it turns out it's not quite as obvious as it looks at first glance. Uh, I recommend you go check out Article 3.2.2.10 related to this, because that's really what covers the definition of counting the number of streets that a building is facing. But I think it's also important that we figure out what the building code's definition for street is, right? So if you go and check out its definition, you'll find that this definition in the building code, I'm not going to spoil it for you because I want you to read it, relates to the minimum width of a street, has to be nine meters at least. It must be public in public use, so it cannot be private, and it must be accessible to fire department, equipment, and so on. Go check out the definition, but these are the relevant items. Minimum width, nine meters, must be used by the public, accessible also to fire department, equipment, and personnel. I'm also gonna recommend that you go check out sentence 3.2.2.10.2, which also points to subsection 3.2.5 related to another way to identify the streets, a, a street, okay? But going back to the use of fire department, why it's important to identify how many streets a building is facing is because if there is something that goes poorly in your building, right? Say a fire and you want to be rescued, you want to make sure that the fire department has access to fire saving equipment, uh, utilities, and be still close enough to your building, right? So that's why things like this will happen as well. All right, but the question is this, uh, I can tell how many streets a building is facing, but should we not actually quantify the distance? So what I have here, for example, is a building and I'm indicating a distance to a street as distance is too great. Does the building code say what the maximum distance is and it's still close enough? Well, basically in general terms, the building code says that 15 meters, if a portion of a building is within 15 meters of a street, it's considered facing that street. But we need more details about this portion of building. Okay, and that's because uh, it also includes whether or not a building is at an angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through some of the articles of the building code related to figuring out portions of a building and how close they are to a street. So sentence 3.2.2.10.3 says that a building is considered to face two streets if more than 50% of its perimeter is within 15 meters of that street or those streets, OK? 
Okay? Sentence four says that if that portion of the perimeter of the building goes up to above 75%, then it's facing three streets. Let me see if I can clarify this even a little more. Let's do a simple example. Let's say we have this building, okay? It's facing, it looks like two streets, possibly, but it's at an angle. And the building perimeter is 80 meters, 80 meters. I'm indicating here with the shaded area, the portion of the building site, the property, I guess, which then intersects the perimeter of the building that's within 15 meters of a street. So that means that this portion of the perimeter of the building is within 15 meters of the street. That perimeter in red is 42.5 meters long. So then, according to the articles that I just mentioned from the building code, you'll find them also in your course notes. Since 42.5 is more than 50%, but is less than 75%, this building is considered as facing two streets. Let's do another example. Let's say a building like this, okay? And this is an example where it looks like this building is facing one street. But is it really, according to the building code, okay? Let's say this building has a perimeter of 64 meters and that in the shaded area, I've included the, por the portion of the property and therefore also the portion of the perimeter that's within 15 meters of the street. So I'm showing in red then the portion of the perimeter that's within 15 meters of the street. It's 38 meters. According to the building code, because 38 meters, that portion of the perimeter, which is less than within 15 meters of the street, since it's less, um, more than 50% of the perimeter, but less than 75%, this building, even though it looks like it's only facing one street, it's actually facing two streets, according to the building code. What gives? What's up with that? Remember, it has to do with access from fire department equipment and personnel. As long as a sufficient amount of a building is close enough to a street, in this case within 15 meters, then more and more of that building is accessible from that same street, even around corners, which is the equivalent of that building actually being at a corner and facing two streets in this case, okay? All right, the last art, uh, item that I want to identify is whether a building is sprinklered or unsprinklered. This is the easiest one to do because it relates to whether or not sprinklers have been defined and required or sprinklers have not been defined and required. Either there are sprinklers or there are not. Just know that the presence of sprinklers is more restrictive than not having sprinklers. What I mean by that is when you go through the analysis that we learned in topic five, okay, you can use the requirements of unsprinklered buildings only if the building is uh, defined as not having sprinklers. Whereas you can use the requirements of unsprinklered or sprinklered buildings only if the building has been defined as having sprinklers. Sprinklers are more restrictive, okay? The only thing you have to know about sprinkler versus unsprinkler is that if sprinklers are required, they must be installed according to subsection 3.2.4. That's it. That's all for topic six. I wanna thank you so much for your time. You could have been anywhere else and you chose to be here. Thank you so much. Take care and I'll see you for our next topic.